Summertime heat bringing me back To the cold beer sun and the times we had Something I could never forget Is the way you said I love you, babe Driving in our car Making all our plans Could have pressed pause forever I don't want to miss a minute But life moves too fast I want to hold on to the moments Of you and I Could we go back To summertime love Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Yay! If you're new here, my name is Nelly, but most people know me as the corporate housewife. This channel is dedicated to all things lifestyle, marriage, and just good vibes, guys. So, anyways, it's Saturday. Um, it's been quite a chill Saturday. This morning, I went to do my hair. It's giving. It's giving. <laughs> I went to go do a treatment at uh, Studio 353 and uh, then on the way back we stopped and we did our monthly groceries and now we just got home so it's time for me to unpack all of that and yeah that noise in the background is my hubby fixing the glass on the one of the cupboards in the kitchen so it's just like a really I would say like wholesome uh saturday we're just doing all the adulting things that need to be done and i just thought i would do a quick grocery haul with you guys since some people were interested after my other video when i posted that i was going grocery shopping i feel like i should have disclaimers before i start <laughs> um but basically we're a household of two plus andy and yeah so think of that when I'm showing you everything and this is not everything I don't get everything um, at macro I just do the pantry stuff and like what makes sense financially and the cleaning stuff as well what I try to do with cleaning stuff especially is that I buy it in bulk so like since I bought it last month I'm good for like a good three to four months um, so it's really just like the everyday type of stuff that I need to restock once a month anyways let me just show you guys what we spent our money on so my kitchen is a huge mess I'm just gonna start here um, so these things I actually typically get at um, Discam, like all the hygiene stuff um, but yeah soap in bulk because we also have like a lot of visitors and people spending the night so always gonna make sure i have soap on hand i got um my hubby's um stuff at macro today i usually get it at discam <clears throat> just because i could find it and it was cheaper yeah but peaceful sleep because you know it's almost mosquito um season this is also for hubby and then obviously toothpaste also again i get it in bulk because when my guests come over like you know it must just be available on hand and then this is all the cleaning stuff i bought this month okay then coming over here we drink a lot of coke <laughs> and the reason why i buy the cans is because if i buy like the two liters they go flat so you end up wasting a lot more whereas like with this one person can just take a can and then yeah finish it in one serving obviously you gotta have juice in the house today i also got this passion fruit cordial because if you know you know and then this is like my pantry staples like the canned stuff um i love cooking i cook a lot so i always need to have these things on hand my soups yeast i've been craving like which I, and i didn't have yeast so i definitely got that and then yeah today i also got olive oil i usually get that at woolies but it was around this it was actually cheaper at macro today so i got that and then butter as well i actually only use like proper butter to cook but i still get um margarine for like bread and stuff then moving over here like fridge stuff obviously gotta get yogurts because we eat um muesli for breakfast and then speaking of breakfast i got like my breakfast stuff if you guys watch my tiktoks you know i'm always frying in the morning <laughs> 
So yeah, I got that. And then today I also got like these mini sausage rolls and chicken bites and fingers because I wanted to do like a little um, like finger food lunch because we are heading out in the evening to go watch the rugby with friends. So we're just gonna hang out and do that. And then yeah, just the snacks, our asali. Yeah, we are big snackers in this house though. I have to admit to that, so yeah also like we have nieces and nephews so always gonna make sure that we have snacks on hand and also like we like to host I, like i hate hosting and then i still have to go buy stuff because it's like oh gosh it just becomes so expensive so i'd rather just buy it up front because i know we like to host anyway so i always just have it on hand and that is my grocery haul um i think it's pretty normal <laughs> Um, it's pretty basic as I said this is just the stuff I get at macro and then I, I'll get like my um, fresh fruits and veggies from other like woolies or checkers um, so I still have to do that and then I buy my meats from a butchery um, in the south so I still have to buy meats <laughs> um, yeah but let me pack away these groceries and just relax but life moves too fast I wanna hold on to the moments of you and I Could we go back to summertime love? Could we go back to summertime love? Summertime life bringing me back To moving slow, we never had a plan Something I could never forget Making love when the rain was falling Driving in our car, making all our plans Could have pressed pause forever hey guys so it's about like 6 p.m now still saturday and we are going to meet some friends to go watch the rugby so excited i'm like low-key a rugby girl like i love rugby <laughs> because i feel like my hobby sports are like formula one and soccer like i'm so into the rugby so i'm so excited to finally be watching with like other rugby fans because the first game i watched with my brother-in-law and he's also into rugby in the past weekend's game i watched it was just me hubby and noma and they like they just they didn't bring the heels, you know? So yeah, I'm so excited. Anyway, so I just finished doing my face. I'm actually quite happy with how it turned out. Like, I think I look cute. Don't mind my laundry basket. <laughs> I think I look cute. I wanna show you guys my outfits. 
so let me quickly show you guys the fit i can't get this top straight but um yeah this is my fit for the night like chilled but still nice for like nighttime plus we're going to like a sports bar it's kind of bougie but like you know it is the rugby <laughs> um so the top is from mr price i got this from hubby's little sister um the jeans are from zara and then i'm wearing my country road sandals so very relaxed but you know still looking good for the evening because knowing my friends this night could end up anyway so anyways yeah we gotta go so um let me go So it's Sunday, uh, it's like Sunday afternoon and um, it's Heritage Day, Happy Heritage Day. So what I usually do like every Heritage Day is like, well I don't think I did it last year but I, I try to like host a Heritage Day lunch where basically I just cook like, you know, the food that we enjoy eating, like our traditional food. So right now that's what I'm doing, I'm in my apron. I've been cooking for a while, but I was like, let me pick up my phone and continue this vlog, otherwise I'll never do it. My sister is already here with my niece. Say hi, guys. <laughs> um, yeah, we're in the kitchen and there's still a lot to do and I have people arriving. I've broken like, one of my cardinal rules for like hosting is that people cannot arrive and the food is not ready or like I'm still cooking. But that's gonna happen today because it took me quite a while to get out of bed. Um, I'm sorry, I just noticed this my air fryer. I didn't turn it on. So, yeah, on the menu today we have um, ucheke um, and we have beef stew, amangona and goku, cream spinach, and I'll see if I get to the chakalaka because I have a lot to cook still, and all I've done is just the stew. My sister is currently making like a little charcuterie board and yeah it's just gonna be like some family and um some friends so my husband's brother and his wife are coming and their kids and then my friend and her mans um are coming so yeah let me get to cooking because i still have a lot to do you hold a smile i'll hold your hand take this love around the world don't mind those crows buzzing around your head nothing's gonna hurt your girl i believe you're here for a while then we die but i believe this love is stronger than Belong to my dad. I know just the thing to do. Don't mind the law, hard on our heels. No one's gonna come for you. I believe. Morning, guys. It is Monday morning. Um, 
Tokyo last night was yesterday was a bit hectic like we literally everyone stayed until about like midnight um, but yeah it was just the most fun um, so now we are heading out with the hubs we are going to we're doing some furniture shopping <sighs> like yeah I'm just really tired and there's a lot on my mind so yeah we're gonna go to deco fern looking for like dining room chairs the ones that i did find and i liked were sold out so back to square one so we're just gonna go have a look to see if like we can find any that we like we're gonna start off at um deco fern and then we're gonna go to the mall to one of the furniture shops so, so let's go To the content um a funny story <laughs> so like my friend bought me a storm yesterday so i didn't drink it um so i'm like having it now and then like i posted it on my um whatsapp status and everyone's like are you trying to die why are you drinking storm i'm like how oh, guys also i don't think i've had a storm in like sure years to be honest so it still tastes good to be honest But I just think that as millennials, we are deeply traumatized by, excuse me, by storm. It honestly is bringing back, like, when I taste it, I'm like, yeah, it takes me back <laughs> to, to some crazy times. But anyway, even my husband took a sip and he's like, ooh, it just brought back trauma. <laughs> anyway, so I went to this game. I ended up going to this game because we, um... Was this like we were at the mall? I need to get some stuff. I actually went in for toner because I'm out, but they didn't have the brand that I used, the Eucerin one. And then on top of that, they didn't have like any other toners like for other brands that I would use. Um, so I was just like, okay, whatever. I'm gonna have to sort that out during the week or something. Um, but yeah, I did go to Discam, guys. I spent a thousand rand. And I'm so disappointed. Like, I don't even know how it got there. I spent a thousand men on literally nine items. So, this week I have an, uh, an event with um, TikTok. So, I'm going to do my own makeup. So, I needed to, like, stock up on some um, essentials that I was, like, running out of anyways. Um, and I'm just like, what the hell? So, I'm going to use my trauma from going to this game. <laughs> to um basically show you guys what i got and do a little discount haul it's really not that much yeah. um but just a few things i needed for this event um so i'm out of mascara so i got mascara it's the l'oreal um volume million lashes it is the best i only ever use um l'oreal mascara i feel like it gives like that falsey um look 
and then i got some lashes because obviously for the event i'm gonna do lashes um this is like the only brand of lashes that i use it's the Ilia brand and they last really long and they're not like too much at all I yeah and they don't feel like plasticky i really love this brand then i feel a sneeze coming <laughs> then um, i'm also out of toner i was i'm not toner primer and i don't like the one that i actually was using before let me show you guys so th like this lady at discam recommended this one for me and i'm just like it didn't do anything to be honest and if anything i feel like my makeup was coming out too powdery so yeah that's gotta go so i got this fit me one i'm hoping it's gonna be good i do tend to have like oily skin um so they have like a matte one and pour eraser for like oily skin um this one is for normal to dry skin so it's going to moisturize the skin i'm hoping that if i use this because i use a lot of powder in my makeup routine that it will sort of like balance it out and you can always just like powder yourself like you know i don't get like super oily but yeah definitely like in my t-zones but i can fix that with um powder then i got um concealer i was out of concealer um and they didn't have this one let me show you guys i should have just taken out my whole oh i should have taken out my whole makeup box i stopped bending so i was confused when i got it because this is the one i've been using for quite a while now it actually lasted a really long time i don't remember when i bought this i think i bought it in april yeah um so they like i was kind of confused because i was looking for this one but now the bottles look like this and i just find it's like such a cool bottle it's so cute for a concealer um oh my gosh it's still closed okay but basically it's like it has a like little sponge thing and in the new ones they have like made the sponge thingy to applicate what the applicator is that what it's called um they've made it like more finer which is actually great so i'm gonna show you guys um yeah like super sleek like it is perfect and it's also it looks a lot softer so i think it, you can get more like precise with the application i got the color 30 and i have to check what color i got last time i got 20 last time but you know what i've noticed with these brands is that sometimes when they bring it back okay, it is a bit lighter but i'm not like i'm actually okay with the color i got because i did find this one a bit light so yeah um but sometimes these brands when they like change the bottle like they also change the numbers which can get a bit annoying and then last but not least i got a lip liner this is a catrice lip liner um it's like in a nude shade it's like literally the only shade i put on my lips okay besides like red it's like this and red that's all i'll use and then i also got this um brown lip liner from la girl so yeah like i can't believe that was like literally a thousand rand i was like how it wasn't even like proper makeup and all the makeup but anyways um but i was looking at my slip like these two were quite pricey it was like 250 each so yeah kind of makes sense but anyways that is my um little disc came home um i hope you guys enjoyed it and i can't wait for this like event like oh, i really need it i really really need this event um it's, it's been a really horrible week for me to be honest um but let me put my makeup away and then we'll chat about that because i have some big news for you guys so yeah i have like a huge life update for you guys um Sure, I don't even know where to start. So, you guys all know that, um, well, most people know that I work for a US tech company. So, a lot of um, the being a corporate housewife really 
did come off of like the fact that I work remotely and um, I have like sort of a different lifestyle to like when you go to work every day, you know, like very flexible jobs um, and stuff. So this week um, I found out that I'm going to be losing my job um, in basically like a month and a half. <laughs> It's crazy. It's wild, guys. It is so wild. Um, but basically the reason is because um, in the US right now, a lot of like the, you know, there's like a recession um, and a lot of the tech companies have been actually laying people off. Um, I remember in Feb were our first round of layoffs and they retrenched 8% of our staff globally. And it seems like now they are moving sort of in a direction of like laying off uh, people like in other countries because um, it's like more affordable operationally just for them to like, you know, manage staff in the US. So yeah, just to give you guys some context. Um, so it's not personal. I, I don't, I'm not taking it personally at all. Um, Jill, there's so much I want to say, <laughs> but I don't want to drag this out because also like it's not a pity party at all. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm trying to organize my thoughts. <laughs> I've practiced this like a thousand times. Like, how am I going to talk about this? But you know, now that I'm actually talking about it, it's like, oh, like my mind is blank. So I'm not taking it personally. So basically, like, um, I was a junior marketing manager, and um, so there were five of us um on my team. Basically, my whole team was retrenched. <laughs> And they're moving those operations um, to a US-based team. Um, granted, it's a it's a business decision. You can't really do anything about it. Um, and then, so basically, I got retrained, my manager and my manager's manager and like some other senior managers as well. So that's why I'm like, it's not personal. It's not like I got fired because of performance and, you know, it's, it's really not personal. It's business. Like that's the, um, it goes with being employed. Um, yeah, so anyways, um, so I've been thinking a lot about like how this is actually affecting me and how it's going to impact my life. Uh, it comes at a time where I was already like just not having a good time. I was already like a good time working. I was already considering either leaving, like I was already job like on the market again. And but also with that, I was telling my husband, I was like, you know, like, I really don't want to work anymore. Like, I don't want to be part of the nine to five gang because it's just not like a lot of fun for me at all. Um, so yeah, it just like, it sucks the way it happened because also like in America, the way that you are like laid off is that, um, they will basically like in the US you can fire someone on the same day. You don't have to give them notice and just like you can resign and only give two weeks notice. Um yeah. So basically, um they've given us like our notices that the company is retrenching, but the only reason why they're doing that is because although I was working for a US company, they did have they still have to abide by South African laws because like our like the business operations like the administrative um operations are still in south africa so i still get paid you know from a south african bank account i pay taxes in sa um like and the company that that is on my contracts is still like the south african based company because uh the division i was working for was originally a South African company then they got acquired by this big tech um company in the u.s just realized i just realized that my husband left a can of coke on his bedside table um now i'm just like oh gosh i didn't move it but anyways it's life um so yeah that's like to give context on like how they like americans do things so it's just the shock of it because it happened so suddenly and it's like oh okay great <laughs> um 
but yeah so i think that was more like that was more like initial feelings i was like this is actually quite like a headache but yeah as i said like i already was done with the idea of working and now i actually want to talk about something that i think a lot of people need to hear like in your 20s like you are grinding you want to achieve like the perfect career and all of that trust me it was me as well like i spent my 20s basically working my butt off to get the job that i just lost <laughs> um and i i uh what's the word like i associated a lot of my identity with the job that i had and i think going through this now I'm realizing that it's actually really dangerous to do that like you are you and you have the skills that you have with or without this job you are not who you are because you have this job there is so much more um so much more to you than what you do for a nine to five especially if it is like a nine to five and it's not like your passion like your passion project or like a business you've started like you know an idea that you took from like ideation to conception i think that's totally like entrepreneurship is a totally different game to um versus like nine to five so i like would really urge people like to not fall into the trap that i did in my 20s where like the biggest achievement in my life <laughs> was the job that i had and also like not making your job as part of your identity and i think that's why it's important to also like have hobbies and find people around you that like bring out the best in you and it has nothing to do about what you do for a living so yeah so as a, like as i also mentioned like for a while now i've really been like fighting this like this yearning and this wanting for something more than like a corporate job and like it just like waking up and having to work was just like honestly the worst thing for me and i was so so unhappy and my husband's always been like you can leave your job but i'm gonna need you to you know also make sure that what you're leaving for, what you're leaving it for is something that is guaranteed you know and that you won't like um change your mind or like give up you know so and i think it's also really important like i, I just want to say like my husband has been absolutely supportive this whole week um and really just like the first thing he did is like I can refer you to some jobs at work and like opened up his computer and he's like send me your cv you know and i was like mm, i don't think i actually want to work <laughs> and yeah so that's also a conversation i had to have with him it was like i don't want to go back to work if i can make this work it's gonna be actually the best thing for me to do um so yeah basically like what am i gonna do next um I'm glad that I started this small page on TikTok called The Corporate Housewife. <laughs> and it's something that has really... Like, I've always wanted to get into content creation. And this was, like, my second time trying it again. And it worked. And I think it worked at the time that it did for a reason. And that's the only, like, validation I need. I think, like... And honestly, I also need to thank you guys because you guys really have validated that like this is something i can do and and not just because like oh i want to be an influencer i don't want to be an influencer i want to build a brand um that's how i think about it i don't want to you know promote different brands and stuff you know just be like a human billboard it must be like this is the corporate house of housewife brand and i think there's like one or two youtubers um an essay who've done that really really well and also content creators actually who've done it well and have been able to turn this thing into a, a business and not just like relying on getting promos here and there like campaigns here and there which is what ends up happening a lot in this industry i'm not um and i just need to say that i'm not hating i literally work in the industry so yeah it's coming from a point of knowledge not just like assumptions um so yeah i'm lucky i have this i was already looking at like what's the next step for the corporate housewife and i'm guys i'm like i'm so excited for the things that i want to do because now i have the time <laughs> to actually like invest in my content and like also um 
like investing in myself like it's the first time in my adult life of only 30 years all of 30 years that um i actually have time to invest in myself and i think like it's something we take for granted when you go to work like you're investing in someone else's business you're not really investing in yourself yes you can all you can also invest in yourself by you know furthering your studies but it's usually furthering your studies to work to make more money you know and it, it's still taking from you instead of pouring into you so yeah that's basically what's next for me is just um figuring out like where i can take my corporate housewife brand because that's how i've always seen it is like it's more of a brand versus like um you know it's actually me yes it, like people come to watch me and they like my personality but I always say like there's nearly and then there's the corporate housewife to be honest <laughs> um and yeah i just hope that like i'm inviting you guys along on this journey with me to figure out what life looks like i also like i am very privileged um with also how this has happened because for some people they're not always as lucky um as me um i'm very well supported by my husband we don't have kids yes we just bought a house which is actually super annoying i'm like i just bought a house i can't afford to lose my job but anyways um yeah i'm very well supported by my husband and we don't have children and we don't have a lot of responsibilities beyond just ourselves so it's it's it is like a hard thing to deal with but the consequences of it are not as big for example as some of my teammates who um have children have moved to a new country you know so yeah i feel like and also like to be honest like we're good my like yeah and also just like um i don't want to talk about finances because it's i think it's very personal um how we get through that is um between me and my husband to be honest um but yeah financially we're okay like we're fine it is gonna be an adjustment like going from a two um income household to a one income household but hopefully it's not going to be for long and this is the part where i ask you guys for help I'm taking a huge risk here by basically like I am still going to apply for jobs on the side of course because you gotta like have a, a backup plan you know but where I'm asking you guys for help is that like I really hope um and I'm really praying that this is a time where my brand and the vision I have for where I want to go is this is the catalyst moment. So I'm just asking you guys like um, um this is this is now content creation as is now like oh what am I trying to say? Content creation is officially my full time job, <clears throat> and also I guess like the housewife part has kind of manifested. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just hope that um. You guys will come along on this journey with me as I try to figure out my next steps. And that guys, I just ask that like, please support my content because without you guys, there's no content to be honest. <laughs> there's no corporate housewife brand without you guys. And I love this community so much. It's really empowered me and taught me a lot about myself as well. And I, you guys are honestly always so positive and encouraging and it makes me want to do more so yeah i just ask that you continue like supporting my com content liking sharing commenting subscribing following you know um and if you see me on your tl and i'm run and i'm doing a campaign please support it as well um yeah but that's basically what i wanted to share with you guys um I'm actually going to go see my psychologist tomorrow because I think like when there's big shifts in life, you need to go speak to someone and just like make sure that you're processing this the right way. Like a lot of people are like, you don't look sad. I'm like, I don't want to work anymore, guys. Like it's actually a blessing in disguise. <laughs> um but yeah, I just hope I can continue to be this positive about it and how I look at it. And that's we figure something out. <laughs>
but it, it will work itself out it will work itself out to be honest um but yeah guys i'm gonna leave this video here because uh, i don't want to ramble too much but yeah as i said i just want to thank you guys so much for those especially those people who started this journey with me um from the beginning like you guys have really just been so amazing and i could not be this positive about like this curveball i've been thrown if it wasn't for you guys so thank you so much and i will see you guys in the next video bye